Hi, this is Kat from Make Books With Me. So today I'm going to show you how to make this book right here. This is the Japanese Stab Binding Watercolor Book. Um, there are a couple of different spine sewing patterns. This is the mm, somewhat simpler one. Um, it's the diamond one. I do have another one, which is, I call the Lotus Flower. It's this one right here. So I'll show you how to sew this one as well. The principle is the same. This one's just slightly more complicated. Also a lot more holes to poke through <laughs> when uh, when you get to that part, you'll see. But yeah, so this will be your finished book in the end. Um, you can buy this book. Currently I'm on Facebook at Make Books With Me page. I'll also have a website called Make Books With Me. You can shoot me a message on whatever platform you're watching this on. I can get in touch with you and show you what color combinations I have available. And you know, also keep an eye on this channel because the tools that you get with this kit, I'll show you how to make alternative books with these tools, even if you don't have more of the materials um, available to you. So I'm excited to show you how to make this book. Uh, so keep watching. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna cover the back cover. So what are you gonna need for this? So you're gonna need your biggest piece of book cloth and your back cover, which is the bigger piece that also has the holes. All right, so first things first, so we're gonna use our PVA glue and the big brush. And we're gonna glue up the back. And then I like to put down a piece of scrap paper to protect my surface, because we also don't want to get glue on the right side of the book cloth, because you can't get it off. All right. So you take your bone folder and you go from the center out towards the edges. So you get rid of all the air bubbles and you don't leave any wrinkles. Okay. There we go. So I put it pretty much in the center. Now we're gonna trim down the edges. What I like to use, I have this really narrow metal ruler box cutter you can use an exacto knife you can use a scalpel you can also do this with scissors but it is harder to get straighter cuts with scissors but if you don't have a straight edge and a and a knife scissors work fine this is probably about three quarters of an inch um it's a pretty good size a little extra all the way around awesome so I've trimmed evenly around all the sides. And now what we need to do is we need to cut the corners. So I like to cut at a 45 degree angle. And then you also don't come, don't come straight up against the corner here. Leave, I mean, I like to go by off the thickness of the book board. One and a half to two times the thickness of the book board is where you're gonna cut your corners. And then that leaves you enough so that you can fully cover the corner when you do pull over the sides. And the reason we cut the corners is we don't want all this excess book cloth bulking up the corner here. So, 45. All right. So. Get another piece of scrap paper, put it under. If you look here, I did glue a little bit further in and you'll see why in just a second. So I like to pull this over with my hands first, then with a bone folder. 
I'm going to head up these corners here. I'll show you what I've done in just a second. Okay. So I did press it in. So it's up in there. So that when we fold it over this way, it looks nice and neat. I actually did forget to do something real quick before going further. I'm going to poke these pre-drilled holes here. I'm going to poke them so I can find them again. I can still see them, but especially if you have the more complicated pattern that has a lot of different holes, you want to poke them before you cover them so that you can find them. I'm going to glue up this other short side and we're going to glue up the big sides. Another thing I like to do while it's still wet is tap up the corners a little bit. Like that, just a little bit. All right, look this side. Okay, awesome. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put this under a big heavy book that I have. Um, any weight is fine, just as it dries, it will pull. Um, so it's a good idea to weight it down. So I'm going to put this aside and then we're going to start working on the front cover. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the front cover part B. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to mark off where we want the book cloth to end and where we want the decor paper to start. And I mean, honestly, this width is pretty good, like about an inch is is a good amount you want it to be enough because this is what holds you know the hinge the front hinge of the book together so you want it to be enough that it grips properly but you don't want it to be like all the way to here because it'll look kind of weird um so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your second largest piece of book cloth so this one's your smallest you want to take the medium sized one and we're actually going to make the straight cut. Don't necessarily trust the cuts that I gave you. I cut this out of a really big piece. So a lot of the cuts were done with scissors, so they're not necessarily straight. So this is kind of the only one that really matters before you glue. So you wanna cut. Oh, this wants to wiggle away. All right. That's a perfectly straight line. All right, so with this, we're going to protect our mat, and then we also want to protect along this line. So I'm going to mask it with this straight piece of scrap paper. Okay, so that straight line there, and a straight line here. So that cut will butt up straight against the glue line, but you do want it to be in the center as far as the top and bottom go. We're gonna fold it. Okay, and that's it. Awesome. All right. So I'm gonna let the back cover dry up a little bit because we actually need it to sort of match the front and the back because in the end you want the holes to be aligned. Um, and we also want this to be the same width and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So I'm just actually just gonna leave this for about five minutes, let everything dry up a little bit and then I'll be back. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you has to do with lining up your holes correctly because this is very important in the next step. So it matters less with the diamond sewing um, hinge, but if you have like the floating lotus power powder uh, floating lotus flower um, it's really important that you don't accidentally glue your front cover like this and then you try to line it up on these holes you know you want to make sure that you glue it this way so that when you attach this 
the whole lineup. So it's very, very important that you get this right. So, you know, check twice, glue once. <laughs> All right. So this is our front cover and this is our back cover. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna glue this part to here. And we want a couple of things to happen when we do that. Obviously we want our holes to match up, but also we want the width to be about, about the same. Um, Cause there is a little bit of a gap here. This isn't quite as wide. Like if this was tight, you know, it's not as wide. And there's a reason for that. It's because you want to have this be loose so it can fold like a hinge. So, you know, and also we wanna make sure, do these holes line up? They do, fantastic. Um, so we wanna glue this up. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get all the glue stuff out of the way. I'm gonna kind of set this here like this. And then we're gonna put this down. Okay, I'm gonna get the width about the same. Perfect. We also wanna make sure this is straight here, that this isn't too far up or down. All right, I'm gonna bone fold it down. So I can find my bone folder. <laughs> All right. And also I'm gonna kinda work this hinge. I'm gonna be gentle. Don't wanna rip the book cloth, but Work this hinge a little bit. Awesome. All right, we're gonna trim the edges. I'm gonna remember, I'm gonna poke the holes real quick while I can still see them. Just always make sure this is clean, no wet glue. I even poke again from the other side. Just don't want to lose these, especially if you have a complicated play out pattern. And it's really annoying. All right, full disclosure, I did injure myself the other day. Um, so do be careful with your straight edge. To be fair, I've been making books for over 10 years and I've never cut myself with an X-Acto knife. Uh, so, you know, just be careful. All right. So actually that's all that we're going, that's almost all we're gonna do with the book cloth. Sorry, just kidding. There's one more little bit that we're gonna do. First, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put on our decorative paper. The decorative paper, some of them have a more geometric design. So you wanna be really careful. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make that straight cut. Just like we did here, we wanna do a straight cut on here. So if it is a geometric design, just make sure your straight cut doesn't make the design go at like a weird angle. Um, it's gonna look strange in the end. So, this one is sort of geometric. I mean, I don't want the flowers going this way. I want them to go like this, not like this. All right, so we're gonna just cut a nice straight line. cover this and what we're going to do this time is actually going to do kind of the opposite we're going to mask the book cloth 
put the glue down, put the paper down. On this one, you wanna be careful that you don't put, you don't wanna to put too much glue here because you don't want it seeping out, but you wanna put enough that the paper fully adheses because this is the, you know, you don't want it peeling up from the edge. center this and then have it butt up right up against the book cloth. Perfect. All right. And big surprise here. We're going to bone fold it. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. All right. We'll flip it over, trim around the edges. So you will get a little bit of glue on your hands and on your bone folder, and you kind of just want to keep rubbing it off. Uh, I have a little trick with my bone folders is actually when I get them, they're, they're perfectly white um, and they're porous. So I actually soak them in olive oil or vegetable oil, you know, whatever I have on hand for 24 hours. Um, and then that makes them not so porous and it means, you know, I wash them after that obviously, but it does mean that it doesn't suck up the glue as much so it's easier to wipe off. So if you ever get a fresh bone folder, highly suggest you do that. All right, so the front and back cover are pretty much done. The only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use that solid paper that came with your kit to line the back of both. We're gonna use the smallest piece of book cloth that we have to back up this area, which A, covers here, but also reinforces the hinge again. Um, and then um, you can start putting it together and sewing it. And actually the, the hardest part of this book is making the covers. The sewing part's really, really easy. In my other book, uh, form that I'm going to be releasing probably next week is a Coptic stitch where the covers are easier than this, but the sewing is the more complicated part. So this is like wrapping presents. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this last piece of book cloth to cover this hinge here. So you're going to do the same thing you did before. You're going to make sure you cut a nice straight line. That's gonna cover here. And I'm gonna make some marks. It's gonna be kind of hard because it's for you to see because it's book, black book cloth. Um, other book cloths will actually have like white paper on the back that's really handy to draw on. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up here and I, I don't want it coming all the way to the edge. I want it to come, you know, a couple centimeters in from every side. I'm just gonna roughly mark it. You actually won't see most of this. You'll only see from here onward when you open the book. This will all be bound up. So it doesn't have to be exact, but you don't want that extra book cloth like hanging off the edge here and then you could see it from the front. So you want it coming, you know, up to about there. All right, so I'm going to use this nice little T-square thing that I have to make the cuts, right angles. Okay. Right, now since the smaller thing this is smaller going on this. We're not gonna glue this. We're gonna glue the book cloth and then lay the glue cloth down, the book cloth down. So. You do have to be kinda careful because the book cloth will start to curl up and you don't want to get glue on the, the right side of it. I'm actually gonna move the book cloth over to finish. All right, 
So it will start to curl up on you. That's okay. All right, so I'm gonna go line it up here and go out from there. Okay. And I'm gonna work the hinge while it's wet. So, you know, it's not the most beautiful in here, but that doesn't matter because you're not going to see this part. Um, what matters is that you have a nice clean line right there. All right. Next up. So you got two pieces of paper that were a solid color that were clipped in with your, you know, book board and your, your text block for the inside. That's to protect them from getting smushed. Um... And these are for covering the inside of your covers. This isn't an exact science. You know, it's whatever is aesthetically pleasing. I feel like, you know, this is a good amount. It's probably about a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna mark a quarter of an inch from here and a quarter of an inch from here. And then it's butted up to the book cloth right here. And then whenever I'm cutting anything that's being seen, I do like to use a triangle or a T-square or something like this so that none of the lines are angled strangely. Remember, don't trust my cuts. They might not be perfectly straight. The piece that covers the inside of your front cover is going to be slightly smaller than the piece that covers the back. As you can see, the amount of real estate I need to cover is different. So don't cut these together. Cut them individually for each. Inside and outside. Inside, cover, front end. Front and back. They're going to be different sizes. Okay. All right. It's really curling up, but that's okay. So... Center it and butt it up here. And use your bone folder. This corner didn't get glued up very well. So I'm gonna get it now. Perfect. Right. So now I'm going to measure up for the back. Awesome. Now I would suggest once again you press these and let them dry so that they're they're not you can even see it starting to maybe not in the video but it is starting to bend so i'm gonna press these let them dry up a bit and we're gonna repoke the holes and then we're gonna sew okay so this next part not gonna lie it's gonna be a little bit tedious but it's best to poke these holes the final time all clipped together, then you keep them clipped together, and then you sew them. So what you're gonna do is your might repoke these just to make them really obvious. Okay. Mm what you're gonna do is gonna line up all the pages and the covers. There should be a little bit of a lip on the end here, not on the spine side, on the side that opens. And possibly, I mean, I've cut these pretty close, but you know, when you add the book cloth and everything, it does add a bit of bulk to it. But center, center. So center this way 
but but the spine up against the edge of the book cloth here so you have a little bit of a lip here and we're gonna put that on top have some scrap paper ready this just sort of protects the book from the clips so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the binder clips that came with your kit so everything was clipped together when you got it we're gonna use those clips again now and this book's gonna remain clipped together until we're done all right, so nice and butted up here. A little bit of a lip on the end here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pokey thing, which is called an awl, which is A-W-L, and you're gonna poke through these holes, through all the watercolor paper, and through the holes in the back. And you're gonna make them really nice and straight down because you're gonna be sewing through them, so. I mean, to be honest, it's going to take a little while. It's going to be a bit tedious. Be careful not to poke yourself with the awl. It is pretty sharp. Um, you know, this way is good to start so you know it's going straight down. And then, you know, pick it up, work the holes a little bit. You're going to have to go through more than once with the needle. So, you know, you do want the holes to be fairly big. I'm gonna finish poking these because I won't necessarily be in view of the camera. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to sew this book together. And you're gonna be so happy when it's done. Okay. Okay, so I finished these four right here. Oh yes, you can see. So as you can see, you can see straight through all of the holes. And the reason you wanna do this when they're clipped together is because you wanna see straight through all the holes in all of these. So you don't want this like, twisting you want all the holes to be straight down and all lined up okay so different kits come with different patterns along the hinge so i'm going to do separate videos for each pattern so you can easily click on the correct one for your sewing and also as i add more patterns i'll just add more separate videos so after you're done watching this go watch the video that corresponds to the stitch pattern that you are creating. The basic concept is the same. You're gonna start, I always start at you know, one end, quickly sew through here, finish sewing up you know, the next area, and then go back up and finish up where I started. And you will always end up back at the stitch that you started at. This will happen no matter what, doesn't matter how many holes you have or if they're an odd number or an even number, because you're sewing on one side, you'll be actually kind of skipping every other because you're, you're also sewing the back. So, you know, you'll sew here on this side and on the back, it'll be blank there, but you'll be sewing here on this side, which will be blank here. But when you come back, you'll fill in the holes, end up back where you started and tie off. The only thing you need to make sure is you need to make sure that you're not sewing lines where you shouldn't be because A, it will be obvious that you sewed one wrong, but it also messes up the fact that you'll end up back where you started. So that's the general rule. So I'm gonna show you how to sew each one separately. So just find the video that corresponds with the sewing structure that you have in your kit. And then honestly, once you tie it off, you're done with your book. So, uh, just find the video that you need to watch. Okay, bye. And our last stitch is gonna end with our square knot with the tail from where we started. Awesome. So we're gonna do square knot. We're also gonna make sure we work the knot up close to the original hole that we started at. You see that the knot's not like over here, it's up, butted up against that corner. I'm gonna make it nice and tight. Okay, we're gonna make sure it's not loose. Sometimes you can make a, accidentally make a fake square knot. Uh, and then it'll just come apart. So just pull both ends, make sure it doesn't come out. 
All right, I'm gonna trim the ends a little bit and then we're gonna use the handy awl here. I might actually make this a little bit bigger right before I do this, okay. And I'm gonna tuck, definitely tuck the little tail ends into this hole here. Then we're gonna try to work the, um, the knot in as much as we can as well. I still want to see the knot a little bit, but honestly, that's pretty neat. And this is it from the front. And we're done. So we can actually take off these binder clips and the scrap paper. And here is your book. I'm going to raise this so you can see better. Oh, here it is. So that's the hinge. That's what allows it to open, is the fact that there's this book cloth, but no book board here. And there you have it. Uh, the last thing that I might do, I'm gonna go in. Bone folders aren't just for pushing things down, it's also for scoring paper. I'm actually gonna score just a little bit. Just first couple of pages so that it opens a little bit better. Okay. We can sort of work the other pages. And there you have it. It's your finished book. Dried bits glue. Um, if at any point you're confused or you need help, or you think you did something wrong, you know, feel free to shoot me an email, leave a comment, message me, um, and I can help talk you through. And if you need a replacement of something because something went wrong, just let me know, um, and I can get that out to you. But you know, I hope that went smoothly for everybody, and I hope you enjoy your book. Please send me pictures of your finished books. And if you're in the picture too, that's awesome. I am used to teaching in person and I really miss watching my students when they do the last stitch on their book and they're like, oh my God, it's a book. Um, so I would love to see pictures of your finished books um, or the look on your face when you finish because it's a very exciting moment. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Okay, bye guys. Happy binding. And I hope you join me again on uh, Make Books with me. Okay, bye.